Hi there! It's great to see you today. Thanks for stopping by. I'm John Merriman, and this is your Tuesday morning guitar song. In 1894, Tsar Nicholas unleashed a brutal program against the Jewish population of Russia. That same year, a young four-year-old Jewish boy lay on the ground outside of his dirt floor shack in a small village in Siberia, and he watched as wild men on horseback burned his shack to the ground. Him, his five sisters, his brother, his mother, and his father, who was the cantor in the village synagogue, were left with nothing, and they started moving toward the east. In one year, they arrived at Ellis Island in New York City Harbor. There they were showered, they were tagged, and they were placed into a pen until it was determined that they were fit to be released into the city. That was young Israel Belin's first steps into his new home. Israel Belin would grow up to be Irving Berlin, America's greatest songwriter. The Belin family moved into a cold water windowless basement in the Lower East Side. And that's a place where Rudyard Kipling, the great author, described as a shocking, screeching slum of tenements worse than Bombay. Israel's father could not find work as a cantor, so he worked in a butcher shop until he died a couple years later. Everyone in the family just had to do what they could do to survive. The sisters rolled cigars all day long for pennies, and young Israel took to the streets to sell newspapers. His father was a singer, a cantor, and young Israel inherited his talent. And while he was selling his newspapers to pass the time, he would sing songs. He would sing the current songs of the day, and sometimes he just makes them up. And then he realized that while he was singing, some passersby would throw him pennies. And that's when he made the connection. Songs equals pennies. And there was no stopping him from that point on. At 12 years old, he left home. He left his family because he felt he was a burden on them. He felt he wasn't making enough pennies every day, so he left. He moved into the Bowery, and he finally got a job at a restaurant on Pell Street in Chinatown. Historians have called this restaurant an upholstered sewer with a brothel one flight up. It was a rough place. He worked his way up to become a singing waiter. And while he was being a waiter all day long, he would sing songs and make songs up again. And he started getting some attention for being a good singer and a good songwriter. At night, he would come back to the restaurant after it closed, and he would teach himself piano by ear. He never learned to read or write music through his whole life. Well, his reputation started to spread, and he was offered a better job as a singing waiter at an upscale restaurant in Union Square, and he took it, so he moved up there. And that happened to be the restaurant where a lot of the publishers and songwriters in New York would hang out. And he got his first big break. People would hear the singing waiter make up these great songs. And there was a man named Ted Snyder, and he owned a publishing company, and he was looking for a lyricist. And he heard young Israel Belin, and he offered him a job. 25 bucks a week and royalties. That was a fortune if you were used to making pennies every day. Israel Belin became Irving Berlin. He quit that job, and he started working in Tin Pan Alley in New York. Tin Pan Alley was on 28th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue, and it was called Tin Pan Alley because the locals would walk through the offices on the street, and the cacophony of the pianos and the percussions sounded like a thousand tin pans being rattled against each other. That was Tin Pan Alley, and that's where Irving Berlin worked for the next 60 years and where he wrote a great part of the great American songbook. Irving Berlin 
ended up writing 1,500 songs in his career. He wrote 19 Broadway plays and 18 movies. He cheered us up through a Great Depression. He inspired us through two world wars. And he kept America singing for the greater part of the 20th century with songs like Putting on the Ritz, White Christmas, God Bless America, and There's No Business Like Show Business. Who would have imagined that that young immigrant boy, Israel Berlin, would become a wealthy American songwriter? And who would have believed that one day he'd be the topic of your Tuesday morning fun fact? Here's your Tuesday morning fun fact. Irving Berlin's first big hit was in 1911. It was called Alexander's Ragtime Band, and it created many dance crazes that swept the world and made Irving Berlin world famous, and he was given the title of the King of Ragtime. Now, Irving Berlin did not invent ragtime music. It was around for 10 or 15 years before him in the African-American community with Scott Joplin and the piano rags and songs that went all the way back to minstrel music. But what Irving Berlin did and what Americans would do from then on forward is synthesize two cultures, repackage them, and then export them to the world. He took the minstrel music, the ragtime music, he anglicized it, he put some lyrics to it, and that is what swept the world. Now, this is important because this is really the first incident of American culture going out to the world like this. And many parts of the world were not quite ready for us barbaric Americans to be exporting our culture. I've got this fun thing. This is a quote from a German newspaper at the time. It says, Alexander's ragtime band is a public menace. Hysteria is the form of insanity that an abnormal love of ragtime seems to produce. It is as much a mental disease as an acute mania. It has the same symptoms. When there is nothing done to check this form, it produces idiocy. That was by Dr. Ludwig Gruner in a German newspaper. Well, Dr. Gruner, wait till you get a load of hip hop. <laughs> Yeah, well, Europeans had a hard time with us back then and our first culture spreading around the world. Well, that's your Tuesday morning fun fact for today. For our guitar song, let's go back to 1935 to the movie Top Hat in one of Irving Berlin's greatest songs. Please don't go away. I'll be right back.
Thank you so much for coming along today. I had a great time. It's always so good to see you. Please hit the like button if you have a second. Share on your social media. Send it out to somebody who you know likes guitar music because you are my word of mouth and I appreciate it. Come back and see me next week. And remember, you're never ready for your day without a song in your heart. Bye now.